Hi everyone. We're going to look at the concept of dry friction. Uh, particularly, we're going to look at the difference between static and kinetic friction. Um, static refers to friction of static equilibrium and kinetic uh, when an object is sliding. You can see in front of me a very simple demo of a wooden block uh, sitting on this level countertop. I've added a bit of weight to it, a thousand gram mass to weigh it down and allow us to visualize the friction force a little bit better. Attached to the uh, right here is a force sensor that's attached to a LabQuest Vernier interface connected to the software uh, Vernier Logger Pro. And as you might ex have experienced around the house moving furniture or something like that, you realize that when uh, you're trying to push a heavy object or pull it, you have to keep increasing the force of push or pull until the object begins to slide. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here to observe the force of friction. I'm going to pull on this force sensor that's attached to the uh, block here with the string, and I'm going to keep increasing that force until the object, the wooden block, begins to slip on the countertop, after which point it should be easier for me to keep it sliding. Um, in order to really understand what we would expect to see, uh, we want to look at, um, we're going to look at uh, the force of that sensor coming in as a function of time. And we generally like to study an object like this with a free body diagram to see where the forces are acting and how they're acting. And so the object clearly has a weight, and I've weighted down a bit more. And the horizontal countertop is pushing back on the block uh, perfectly horizontal, so the normal force is straight up and keeps the object in static equilibrium vertically. Then if I begin to pull on this force sensor, uh, you can see that we can call that force sensor F. As I begin to pull on that to your left, I will expect to experience, and I can feel it here, a force of friction resisting me to the right. And this force of friction we tend to call static friction for the reason that it's keeping the object static, but uh, is still opposing it. Right? And so we will begin to observe what that force of friction looks like as I pull on this force sensor and get the data coming in. So let's do that now. So on the software here, you can see that I will first calibrate by the sensor to zero by zeroing it with the zero button. And then I'll begin to pull on it as I was just showing you earlier, but this time we'll collect data. So the vertical axis is the force, the horizontal, the time. I'll just begin to pull on this after I press collect. And we should see the data coming in. I'm just increasing my force steadily, after which point it begins to slide. I will scale this graph a little bit so we can visualize the graph a little bit better. And you can see that the graph uh, of force starts sort of at zero and increases as I kept pulling on the block to a maximum point, after which it began to slide. And for me, it was quite a bit easier to get it to slide than to get it all the way up here. We can tell that's a larger force friction. So going back to our free body diagram here, we can see that that force of friction just kept increasing. If we look at the graph that we brought in just now, from zero newtons, the force of friction kept increasing up to some maximum value, which we call the maximum static friction value. But in the whole range up to that point, I felt a resistive force, and this, this whole range is still considered to be a static friction value. And it is taking on a value from zero to this maxima. Right? And the value that it takes uh, between zero and the maximum is defined by a coefficient of static friction, mu s, times the normal force that we drew on the block. 
after this point, we saw that the graph began to drop. It suddenly became easier for me to start to keep the object sliding afterwards as well. And so this portion of the graph we refer to as kinetic friction of sliding. And it takes on typically a constant value. We can call this Fk. And it also uses the kinetic uh, coefficient of friction times the normal force, a value that's typically smaller than the coefficient of static friction. So to conclude, we can say the following about static and kinetic friction. Static friction is an inequality of values that range from zero all the way up to this maximum static friction value that I reached by ex extending this force, increasing it further and further up to this peak of this graph where it began to slide. And the kinetic friction value takes on a constant value the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. So that's it for now on dry friction.